And the big, beautiful Bill Roberts Chevrolet pace truck rolls out. Hermitage Lumber Late Models, 12 strong, ready to run 20 times around. As the cars hit the track, we will get the starting grid set for you as Dalton Imhoff out of Jamestown, Missouri, earns the front row starting spot after a good run in his heat race whenever he started back in third. He won his heat, jumped up two spots, and that's good enough to get him P1 to start the race. Larry Ferris, your current point leader, only 27 points to the good side. With two wins on the season, five total top fives, he will start in second. Rich Fountain Rocket, Matt Becker out of Rich Fountain, Missouri, starts inside row two. Brian Allison to his right-hand side. He is out of Marshall, Missouri in the 1A. Last time out, Justin Wells picked up a feature win, only 10 races under his belt, one win, and it came right here at Lucas Oil Speedway. He's out of Aurora, Missouri in the 98, and Tucker Cox is out of Jefferson City in the 1T. Larry Jones starts inside row four, and Joe Walking Horse, Miss Piggy, Flying high on the top of the 99, he starts back in eighth. Jason Sivils and Jake Morris back in row five. And Big Show Bob Cummings back in row six. And J.C. Morton, the B-Mod driver, also pulling double duty in a late model. He had to pull off the track early in his heat race. He starts in 12th. And there's the Wheatland Outlaw, Mike Striegel, your flagman, ready to get this one underway. Let's everybody know that we are ready for liftoff here in the Hermitage Lumber Late Model A feature. First of our four finales for you on Veterans of Military Appreciation Night. So grab you a drink of sweet tea, sit back, and get ready to ride along with us in this one. Dalton M. Hoff and your new points leader here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks, Larry Ferris, getting to make a run tonight without the Flying Dutchman, the hammer, Cole Henson. Breathing down his neck. Will Ferris get another feature win? Or will we have our fourth different winner of the season? Dalton Emhoff likes those odds as the late models get loud here at Lucas Oil Speedway. Emhoff Construction 96 out in front, black and blue, and rolling good here to get things started. And Shane, it has not taken much time for Justin Wells the driver from Aurora, Missouri, who won the last time he was here, to say, you know what, this 98 looks really good up front. Let's hustle up and get there. And the 98 looks really good down low on the racetrack. You see so many late model drivers decide to sling it off into a turn like what Larry Ferris is doing right now. If you're a really talented driver, you're able to do that. But if you are a more basic driver, and you just want to find where the tacky stuff is on the track and find speed, that's what J Justin Wells does. He has gone down to the inside. That's how he won a week ago. And now Dalton Emhoff is sandwiched between two drivers looking for the front. Larry Ferris flying around the top of the racetrack in the 98, nailed to the bottom of the racetrack right now as Wells continues to catfish his way around this 3 8 of a mile semi-banked oval. They will both get around the 96 ride of Dalton Emhoff, but as they pass him, it's trouble for Jason Sivils. One of the real good guys in racing in Sivils brings out the first Boone's Barbecue Barn caution flag of the night. Shane, that, that rocket just don't look like it's riding right, <laughs> does it? No, something not quite right with the Civcon Materials Zero of Jason Civils. But something is working right for the two guys that are in front right now and Larry Ferris in the 51 and Justin Wells, who has moved up, running in second. He's going to choose the inside and no real big surprise no. there by doing so. I think this track, we're only four laps in, 16 to go. Got a sneaky suspicion this is going to turn Justin Wells' way before the night is done as he was gradually inching up closer and closer to the 51. He did it a week ago, and he is trying to repeat back-to-back -back wins in his only two outings here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. Wouldn't it somehow just make sense and, and level everything out if all of a sudden you saw Larry Ferris, who's got two wins at the track, this year, Cole Henson, who's got two wins at the track this year, but he's kind of where's Waldo tonight. We don't know where Cole is. And then Wells could come up, and he could be a two-time winner in this late model division here tonight. But he's got to get around 
That red and yellow rocket there of Larry Ferris, the 51, always gets a good jump. He gets away clean and green, but Wells will go right back to the bottom of the racetrack. Ferris flies around the top, and he just slings in front of him as they come to the flag stand now. So two distinctly different lines between the top two cars on the scoring pylon now as Ferris, a two-time winner here in Wheatland, wheels it high again up around the cushion and he continues to get just enough bite, but Shane, I feel like the line that, that, that the 98 continues to run. Justin Wells just trying to find a little bit more. He's gonna have another restart to do it as problems <laughs> for Miss Piggy over in turn number four as Joe Diffie walking horse has found trouble in turn number four. That brings out another Boone's Barbecue Barn caution. The boss <laughs> says it's time to take a break. We'll come back and get the field reset for you here in just a minute on Veterans and Military Appreciation Night. The Hermitage Lumber late models under caution here, the first of our four hey mains for you as a part of weekly show number seven, Veterans and Military Appreciation Night in Wheatland, Missouri. Happy to be back with you again. Good run prior to the holiday weekend on Thursday Night Thunder. Another good show here for you tonight. Corey Riggs and Shane Freebie and just about ready to put the green flag back up in the air as the field chases that fast 51 of Larry Ferris. Justin Wells almost completed the pass for the lead twice each time. The caution came out. This is go at it, number three. Wells continues to wheel his 98 right around the bottom of the racetrack. Dalton Emhoff, who was making it a three-car battle up in the front, has fallen back behind them all alone in third. Then there are three across in turn number four with the Rich Fountain Rocket, Tucker Cox, and Larry Jones. And cars will bounce off of one another. And Wells continues to be up on the wheel of the 98, trying to get around Larry Ferris, but as you pointed out, Shane, it's been a Boone's Barbecue Barn caution that has taken that spot away, but lap after lap, he is getting alongside the 51 of Ferris. Wells just not going to waste much more time before he puts his hot rod out in front. Last time around, Ferris had a .07 second lead over Justin Wells, clears him by a car length this time, then it's a straightaway back to third place running Dalton Imhoff and Brian Allison running in fourth. So Justin Wells, two-time IMCA national champion. That was back in 03 and 04, successive years there. He won four times a year ago running in the Cash Money Series as the cross flags fly 10 times. We've already ran 10 more laps to go. Brian Allison in that black diamond chassis trying to pick up another spot. He finds himself in the third and final podium position with Emhoff and the Capital Kid Tucker Cox behind him. State Tech sponsored one T out of Jefferson City, Missouri, taking a similar line to the 1A. Emhoff continues to go around the high rent district, hustling around the cushion as we get back to the front. Wells and Ferris still going mano e mano and Wells running the bottom side of the racetrack right around the hub. There is Next to no separation between these two cars, Shane, about a tenth of a second, as this time Wells gets the benefit off of turn number four. He will take the lead for the first time. Big key right now is the car in front of them in Bob Cummings. Bob about ready to go a lap down. Which way will he choose? Is he going to get in the middle of the track? He's going to slide up and get in Ferris's way. Justin Wells will use it as a pick and grab the lead. Wells, the beneficiary of what we always like to call the great equalizer, lap traffic. That time, the line Bob Cummings decided to keep that Bob's Auto Shack 6 on was right in Larry Ferris's way. Ferris hit the back end of the 6 just a little bit, pulled the sheet metal out a little bit, and now is two or three car lengths behind your race leader as Justin Wells tries to complete a run of back-to-back -back wins here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. That's a battle for third on your screen now. Brian Allison and Tucker Cox. And Shane, isn't it always the case? It seems like week in and week out, 
Tucker Cox is just almost a lock to be in that third or fourth spot. He just hasn't figured out a way to get around the likes of a Cole Henson or a Larry Farish yet. Yeah, those have been his Achilles heels all season long. And now Brian Allison, who's making the run back at Lucas Oil Speedway after a number of weeks off, the 24-year racing veteran. He's going to play spoiler for Tucker Cox right now as he is sitting up in third. Massive lead now for Wells as more lap traffic finds Larry Ferris as he tries to get around Jason Sivils now. It's Wells by one second over Larry Ferris. So Justin Wells trying to become just the third driver this season to win multiple late model races here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. At 98, sponsored by Midwest Sheet Metal, Bill Vance Marine will take the white flag. One more time around for the driver from Aurora, Missouri, who won it all here back on June 30th, Thursday Night Thunder. That Eagle machine engine has been screaming all night, and it will let him soar to the top spot tonight in the Hermitage Lumber Late Models. Justin Wells, a winner again for a second straight time here at Lucas Oil Speedway. Justin Wells wins for the second time. Larry Ferris, a two-time winner on the season, 1.9 seconds back. Then it's another eight seconds to Tucker Cox, who does come home with a podium finish. Yet again, Brian Allen. Lucas Oil Speedway, Saturday night, short track racing under the lights. And it's time for the Ozark Golf Cars USRA B-Mods to take center stage. They will follow the big, beautiful Bill Robert Chevrolet pace truck out onto the track and get ready for five extra laps and a $750 check to the winner. Originally scheduled to have 20 entries in this one. We'll get ready to set the field for our B-Mod A-Main and a pair of heat race winners make up row number one. That's the 55 of Colson Kirk and the 7B of Terry Schultz. Back behind them in row number two, it's J.C. Morton out of Springfield, Missouri and the 24L of Dakota Lowe. Then you'll find Greg Scheffler starting inside of row number three with Ryan Eddy, the 15 out of Cross Timbers, Missouri, to his outside. Hollywood, Kenton Allen will roll off seven, and K.J., Chris Jackson out of Lebanon, Missouri, a six-time track champion here, will start eighth. Then it's Ryan Gilmore and Jeremy Lyle, another pair of Show Me State drivers, the 66 and the 05 in row number five. Donnie Jackson in the 42J will start 11th. The Super 8 of John Sheets to his outside. Then it's the OK of Lee Summit, Missouri's Tracy Killian. And the 98 for Christopher Watts. Dwight Brown and Jim Gish will make up row number eight. Then it's Quentin Taylor, the Shark, Mark Schaffman, and Andy Bryant, who was DQ'd earlier in the day, will be shotgun on the field. So typically the question is, who are you going to put your money on in this B-Mod division to come home with the win? The side bet in this one, how many laps does it take Andy Bryant to work from dead last up to the top five? He's got five extra laps to do it in as Colson Kirk, big mover in his heat race, won the first of three heat races. Terry Schultz on the outside and a big pile up to get things started. Four cars go to the infield, two cars stop in the middle of the track. That is Ryan Eddy in the number 15. Jeremy Lyle in the 05. First time Lyle has been to Lucas Oil. A red sunset going down <laughs> at Lucas Oil Speedway as we come back from red flag yeah. conditions. Not the only thing red. On the opening lap of our Ozark Golf Cars USRA B-Mod A feature. Veterans of Military Appreciation Night here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. And the cars begin to roll. Tough start here for Ryan Eddy, the driver of the 15 on the hook. The Hobby Time Motorsports Safety Crew taking him back behind the wall. Everybody else now will stack up and pack up two by two, Shane. And that was as rough a go as you can get on an opening lap. Don't see, we're lucky not to see the red flag unfurled in Mike Striegel's hands very often, but we did to start this one. And that started from sixth position on back. That's where Ryan Eddy was. Jeremy Lyle started in 10th. So with those two cars both getting damaged, you see now the smoke coming out from Greg Scheffler's car. Yeah, up front. that's nothing to worry about. Yeah, it didn't, <laughs> didn't hurt him at all in his heat race. No. 
So they, Old Smoky. They will cross everyone over from uh, P6 on back. So a completely different grid than what we had to get this started on the initial green flag. But with the Hobby Time Motorsport safety crew quickly getting to the car of Ryan Eddy up front, does not take long at all to get this back underway. Only two more circuits under the caution flag. And now Colson Kirk again will have the field in toll. He will be the pace setter with Terry Schultz on his outside. Prime seating over there on the back stretch as there's grandstands on both sides. You can get up close and personal to these Ozark Golf Cars USRAB mods. Terry or Colson Kirk, pilot of the 55, presses down on the loud pedal, and there's a little more smoke coming out from Scheffler's car this time as we are back underway, and Terry Schultz on the outside. Rim riding around through turns one and two. He stays right with Colson Kirk on the initial lap. They all spread out. Two and three wide on deeper in the field and off of turn four, Terry Schultz uses that outside line to keep that momentum up as Quentin Taylor will spin it around. Another car involved in that as well and that is the zero of Tracy Killian in the zero K that brings the Boone's Barbecue caution out. The zero K has been able to collect three top tens this year. <laughs> Left front is towed in. That, that would be one way to describe it. Think, uh, think it might be a, a little bit out of alignment from the way he started the race tonight. Not sure what damage, if any, you find on the 214 of Quentin Taylor. You see him trying to get back in line behind Jim Gish. With the B-Mod finale here Shane having a little bit of hard time getting to full lift off here we were able to clip one green flag lap off that time after going under a red flag stoppage on the opening lap of this one well luckily for Terry Schultz they got that lap in that lets him now have the catbird seat front row all to his own I thought you had the catbird seat well, when you're in the MAF TV production booth, this is the best view in the house. Not only do we get to see the track, but we get to see the great camera work from everyone around this 3 8 mile oval as they are stacked and packed. Good looking racing surface right there on the back stretch. You'll see a lot of action coming your way right in your living rooms there as J.C. Morton again looking for his first win here at Lucas Oil Speedway this season. He starts outside row number two. Green flag back in the air, and Terry Schultz is back on the attack. Goes down to the bottom side and turns one and two and tries to put some distance between himself and those two cars that continue to battle door handle, door handle for second. J.C. Morton going up to the high side here as we get back to green flag racing. Will that give him an advantage over Colson Kirk and Morton? Just by a nose there as they try to come to the line, trying to find his way into sole possession of second place. Good side-by-side -side racing as well for fourth now as Chris Jackson, the former national champion and track champion, trying to get around the 98 of Kenton Allen. So good racing right now for second and third. Jim Gish going to take the 25 back behind the wall. But as all this goes on, Shane, that 7B, that silver bullet, for Terry Schultz looking good right now. Chris Jackson back in fourth right now, defending track champion three times over in your battle for fourth is Kenton Allen. First time we've seen him here in a long time, the Kansas native and third generation driver running back in fifth in the 98A. But again, side by side now, J.C. Morton. He is just not gonna give up on that razor's edge up top. He continues to ride the cushion around turns three and four. Colson Kirk though, who has a lot of success down on the bottom side. He's starting to reel in your race leader in Terry Schultz. There's still a pretty good size difference between the two, a one second advantage between Schultz and Kirk as now Chris Jackson is caught up with J.C. Morton. And that's a familiar phrase, Shane. J.C. Morton, Chris Jackson, Chris Jackson, J.C. Morton, their stories always intertwined here at the Lucas Oil Speedway, but now it's no long rigs here with you at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. 
Time to get back to work as Terry Schultz will bring him around to restart this USRA B mod main event. Five extra laps. Typically we run 20, we get 25, and so far we have only completed six as the caution flag has come out a number of times with some cars going by the wayside, but the one car that has been most consistent out of everyone has been Terry Schultz in that silver bullet up front in the number seven, just continues to click away lap after lap. Chris Jackson, though, however, is starting to make his move. He is now at the inside of J.C. Morton. That is a battle that we have seen over the last few laps, and he will now off of turn number two, have him by a full car length as they barrel into three. Hey, Shane, do you remember when Andy Bryant got DQ'd and started 20th on the field? Yeah. Yeah, he's up to like sixth now. Well, the, the well now <laughs> he's, he's officially in fifth. The question was on the side bet, how long would it take him to go from dead last to the top five? Eight laps would be the over-under on that. As he continues to run top shelf, Kenton Allen the next in the crosshairs, and Kenton Allen unable to put up much of a fight with Andy Bryant. So you get the usual big three now lined up third, fourth, and fifth with Chris Jackson, J.C. Morton, and Andy Bryant. And two cars that we have seen here before that have had some good success here before. But how will Colson Kirk and Terry Schultz hold up under the pressure of the likes of Chris Jackson, J.C. Morton, and Andy Bryant, who all want to find their way back to victory lane here in Wheatland tonight. Well, let's give Terry Schultz and Colson Kirk their due as they have had a lot of success over the years racing in general, but in this B-Mod division is now it is a battle for the lead. Kirk has reeled in the top running Terry Schultz. He cut it down to a .3 second advantage that last time by as they exit turn four. Kirk, Kirk will make it even closer as he peeks to the inside .2 seconds the lead now for Terry Schultz. Schultz on the year with six wins. He had eight wins last year. Champ at Central Motor Speedway last season. Finished third at Lakeside. So we know he's a wheel man. We've seen him behind the wheel of a modified. Now he's turned his attention to a B mod. Colson Kirk in the number 55. Just as strong. Five wins this year. Winning at Electric City. Three wins at Dallas County. He had 12 top fives a year ago, but here comes Chris Jackson to the inside. Battle for second is on. Chris Jackson is there. RCR on the nose of that J2 Ruble race engine powered 65. And while Colson Kirk and Terry Schultz are good, if you combine all of their wins this season, that doesn't total the 16 that Chris Jackson has as he tries to make his way up to the top spot right now with 10 laps to go. But, hey, tell you what, that 55 pulling away now from Chris Jackson. He was right up behind him. And then Kirk able to carve out a little bit of room for himself. And if you remember correctly, early in the year, we looked at Chris Jackson's stats and thought, where has he been? What has he done? He was not really knocking on the door of the top five in national points. He didn't have all that many wins. And then you start looking at it, well, he didn't run all that many races. Mm -hmm. He had only ran like, oh, six or eight races and had, oh, four or six wins, something like that. So he was winning just about every time he came out. You remember the Nationals last year? Chris Jackson won night one. He won at night two, but when it came time to shine on night three, who knocked him off his pedestal? It's the man looking to take away third right now as J.C. Morton dips to the inside, and the number 18 is there to battle for third. When they are side by side, I always get this Cain and Abel vibe. They're not brothers, but they fight like it sometimes on the track, and Morton is able to pull out in front now, put that J265 about a car length behind him as they hit the flag stand. And we continue to go green flag racing here with the B-Mods in such a brilliant battle between the 18 and the 65. You say Cain and Abel, I say it's more like David and Goliath. Right now, Chris Jackson is more like the Goliath. Six time track champion, three time national champion, the last couple years for those two drivers nationally have not been all that great because there's a young man up north that has claimed that title. But J.C. Morton still trying to right the ship, gets back 
gets past Chris Jackson, that is. David's going to win the war over Goliath, and now Colson Kirk is next out the front windshield of the 18 of J.C. Morton. J.C. Morton was your 2016 and 2018 Lucas Oil Speedway track champion, a winner at the USRA Nationals in 21, the B-Mod champ in 2016. I don't know if David and Goliath is fair, but I know they put on a dandy race anytime they're anywhere near one another on the racetrack. And Colson Kirk now pulling away from J.C. Morton, who holds on to third with Chris Jackson right behind him, and they're running out of laps. Took forever to get the first six in the books. Since then, rattle off lap after lap, now two to go. It is all Terry Schultz out in front by nearly an entire second. This year, battle for second, Colson Kirk. On the inside is Terry Schultz off of turn number four. White flag flies for Mike Striegel. Puts another car a lap down. If he can stay clean, green and clean for one more lap, this is Terry Schultz's race to win. J.C. Morton right on the back bumper of Colson Kirk. Can he grab second away? Terry Schultz looking for his first win at Lucas Oil Speedway, and he has found it. Terry Schultz wins by 1.1 seconds over Colson Kirk. J.C. Morton in third. What a run in that silver bullet for Terry Schultz. The veteran collects the win. The rest of the podium, Colson Kirk and J.C. Morton. Then it's Chris Jackson in fourth. Andy Bryant goes from 20th to fifth to round out the top five. Ryan Gilmore, Hollywood. Kenton Allen and Dakota Lowe go six, seven, and eight. The Super 8 of John Truck. We had two Bill Sh Robert Chevrolet heat races earlier tonight to help set the field for this one. And we talked so many times about how it's not exactly where you finish that counts. It's how many cars you pass on your way there in the heat race. Christopher Sawyer, prime example, finished second in his heat race to Ed Griggs, but he passed five cars on the way to that second place finish, and that will get him the top spot in your starting grid with Ed Griggs outside of him. Rodney Schweitzer won his race. He starts inside row number two, but Rob White, who finished fourth, jumped up five spots. That gets him second, and he will start P4. William Garner and Mark Simon back in row number three. Mason Beck, your midseason point champion at Lucas Oil Speedway, and he won his last time out at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks on Thursday Night Thunder. He starts in seventh. Brian White back in row four outside of him. Row five has Waylon Dimmitt and David Hendricks. Zeb Keeper and James Ellis make up row number six. Doug Keller and James McMillan. Dean Willie and Darren Phillips, your top 16 starting spots for your A main with Johnny Coates and Jim Sehe. Blake Bolton didn't have a great run, started at first in his heat, came home dead last, and that's where he'll start out of 19 cars for our stock cars. You'll trade in a little bad luck in the heat race for a good run in the A main. We'll see if he can make his way from the back to the front. The guy's in the front, Christopher Sawyer and Psycho Ed Griggs. We'll see the USRA stock cars come screaming to life. It's the green flag. Waves highly out of the hand of Mike Striegel, and we get this one going. Sawyer right around the bottom of the racetrack with Psycho to his outside, that Crump Construction 47. When you talk to other drivers, they all say how fast it is. They're three across behind them. Then Griggs gets slowed in turn number four, and Sawyer goes running away. Shane with Rob White reeling him in immediately, and Will Garner to his inside. Okay, so you're going to see cars bouncing off of one another all night long in this class, and that's another thing that makes this so special. That contact you saw on lap number one, that would have made a car spin in a modified or a late model division. It was a hard side-to-side -side contact. Johnny Coates now will spin over in turn number four. Blake Bolton, a member of that as well as the 34 is back out on the track. But Johnny Coates out of Joplin, Missouri, brings out our first caution two laps deep. Johnny Coates has had a rough go of it lately, Shane. You and I have talked about it not being a J.C. Morton-esque year for J.C. in the B-Mod division. Johnny Coates, meanwhile, at one point in time had nine DNFs in a row, and he has been logging a lot of miles and having to put a lot of work in that 35 from Joplin. And, Somebody else who's going to need a hand here from the Hobby Time Motorsports safety crew is 
Jim Sehe in the Subway sponsored yeah. 99, and he's he – And there's a little bit of a flame underneath the hood as well. That's what he's worried more about than anything. And that is a brand new motor. This is a car that is out for the first time all season. Is the Hobby Time Motorsports safety crew now making sure that that flame is extinguished? Didn't get that engine on a fire cell, did he? No, I'm afraid okay. not. That was a that was a home built work, a family project to get that thing put together. And this one is going to give us quite a pause here, two laps in to the start of our stock car finale. So we will step aside. It is Christopher Sawyer out in front of this one. We'll have more USA stock car racing coming to you from Lucas Oil Speedway after this. A tough opening night for Jim Sehe in the 99 as he gets pushed back behind the wall by the Hobby Time Motorsports safety crew. We will try to get back to green flag racing here for the O'Reilly Auto Parts USRA stock cars. It's Sawyer and Garner rolling off one and two, and immediately Rob White will make it three across. Mason Beck will be three across as well back behind them, but... The yellow lights come on all around the racetrack and the cars will slow. And what did we miss? Nobody in the wall, nobody pointing the wrong way, but were there some remnants left from the last caution on the track that needed to be cleaned up that maybe didn't? Mike Striegel will point the cars in the right direction. The yellow lights will be turned off and everybody will get stacked and packed Two by two behind the 12 of Buffalo, Missouri's Christopher Sawyer. Sawyer will send his foot to the floor as he gets around the big white tire with the big orange cone. And let's try this again. Rob White running to the inside of the 12. Garner to the outside. Psycho Ed Griggs slides up the racetrack. Nearly makes contact with Kansas City, Kansas' Rodney Schweitzer. Then he brings that Crump Construction 47 right back in the middle of the racetrack. David Hendricks hustling around the high side, and we got cars bouncing off one another at multiple spots as Rob White tricycles his car through one and two and rubs right up alongside your race leader. Garner to the outside, and the legion of Lebanon drivers <laughs> on either side of Sawyer. Will he survive off of oh. four? Nope, he won't. And one right behind him, too, and Brian White. So three Lebanonites all in that top five running order with Psycho Ed Griggs slapped in there as well. And that will give Rob White your win or your lead. Garner running in second. Sawyer drifts back to third. He's going to get sandwiched again as Brian White to the inside looks to take over third. Psycho Ed Griggs right in that mix as well. Rob White and Will Garner, as Shane mentioned, a pair of drivers from Lebanon. The only sub-20 seconds laps turned the last time of round as they run one and two right now in the battle for the top spot. They will come back to the flag stand. It'll be Rob White by two-tenths of a second as Garner goes to his outside. It's an early exit for Waylon Dimmitt now as the Hobby Time Motorsports safety crew will check on him as he brought the 11 into the infield. The hood is up on that car. They will try to give him an assist. Shane, this is an interesting spot here. Rob White, once early in the season, referred to Will Garner as his other son. And right now, they are the two that are battling for the top spot here with Brian White trying to catch up to Dad and his good friend Will. And Brian White to the inside of Ed Griggs. Looks as though he's going to get that third spot away as now David Hendricks, past champion here at Lucas Oil Speedway, gets a... Uh, Roadblocked, if you will, by Psycho Ed Griggs, who drifted up in front of him. That will allow Brian White now to grab third. So that contingency from over in Laclede County running one, two, three. Boy, that that it, you get some creepy like DEI vibes or something <laughs> right now to back in the day because you know they would love to see this race finish with them lined up one, two, three. Those three fellas behind them, though, have a different idea. Psycho Ed Griggs, the Buckhorn Bullet, David Hendricks, and the man who sat on the pole to begin this race, Christopher Sawyer, all running right behind them. And David Hendricks has had some tough luck. Shane talked about it earlier. 
but Rob White has been in the right place and it's been the right time so far for him. Will Garner was all over the back bumper of the five and now Rob White enjoying a half a second advantage, but Garner just a little bit better off of four, knifes back into it and cuts a tenth of a second off on the differential after we've cleared the halfway point here in our 20 lap feature. And Brian White right now playing more defense than he is offense as the top two cars have now started to check out from him. He's just trying to keep Ed Griggs and David Hendricks back behind him. Rob White, however, who is running up front. We talk about drivers being bridesmaids a couple of times. Rob White is the epitome of that. Two second place finishes running third in points, but by only 19 points here at Lucas Oil Speedway. He won last year, and now William Gardner. He's starting to hound on him again, riding right on his back bumper. You see the battle back behind them for third, fourth, fifth, with Griggs behind Brian White. Brian White trying to hold back the horde that wants to make their way to the front there with Hendricks, that outlaw Josie Wales ghosting inside the 54, and that Days of Thunder throwback look on Psycho Ed Griggs' car. And what Brian White is doing is he's doing one heck of a job of keeping them at bay while Dad and Will Garner <laughs> duke it out up front with just five and a half laps to go. How wide can Brian White make that USRA stock car? Well, he's done a good job of it this year. He's won twice already, one April 23rd, one again back in June. He is your current point leader, but by only two points to the good side over Mason Beck. So your current point leader running third, dad and semi-stepbrother <laughs> running one, two. You think he's got a rooting interest on in which one of them wins? I can tell you this much, Will Garner has been good this year, but of that group of drivers, he has yet to get into victory lane. Rob White has been there. Brian has been there more than Dad has been there. But right now, Will Garner's thinking, maybe tonight is my night. Maybe I can find my way to victory lane here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks and log his first win of the season. He was a sixth place finisher at Midway last night. As we go back in the field, a battle for fourth between David Hendricks and Ed Griggs as they will be side by side through three and four once again with two laps to go. Hendricks with the nose out in front there, but it is all Lebanon up front. We toyed around with that Lebanon Legion line. I kind of like the bloodline. You've got <laughs> dad, you've got son, you've got stepson, all running one, two, three. They keep it going here. Can they make it a one, two, three finish? The white flag lets us know the whites and Will Garner have one more lap to do it. Garner, giddy up around the outside. Rob White says, no, sir. He keeps the five out in front. Last two turns for Garner as he will gun it back to the bottom of the racetrack. Try to sling it around the outside, but it's Rob White's night as he will win here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. Will Garner, a spectacular second place finish. And Shane, the bloodline, if you will, does it. They go one, two, three. Rob White, Will Garner, Brian White get it done. So Rob White, your winner for the first time this year, backing up his one win from a year ago. Garner in second. Brian White, the son of Rob, finishes in third, and David Hendricks in fourth. The rest of your top ten with Griggs, Beck, and Dean Willie. Chris Sawyer, who started on the point in eighth. Keller and Mark Simon round out your top ten. Still rolling over at the go-kart track. We're still rolling over at the dirt track. You see the Wheatland water tower off in the distance. That beautiful, beautiful picture of the sunset here in Wheatland. Corey Riggs and Shane Freebie with you. We've got one more for you. One last ride with that Bill Roberts Chevrolet pace truck to get ready to go with our Cedar Creek Beef Jerky USRA Modifieds, the Hobby Time Motorsports Safety Crew, waving them around, and that means we've got time to walk you through the field for this one, starting with your front row. Shane, a familiar name, going to start out in front for this one. E.T., Eric Turner in the 16S will get things started with the brilliant graphics 96 of Cody Brill to his outside. You keep calling for it. Will tonight be the night for Dustin Hodges? The Team 2-2 Racing 
car will start inside of row number two. The veteran Tracy Wolf to his outside in the 21 TW. Row number three, you'll see the 23 of Lucas Dobbs, the five-time track champion here at Lucas Oil Speedway in a modified Jeff Cutshaw. The 98 rolls off sixth. Then it's Johnny Wyman starting seventh. The principal, Jason Persley, he's got the eighth starting spot. The Rondo Baptist Church ride of Donnie Fellers. The 24D will start inside of row five with Jimmy Dowell's 88 to his outside. Row number six, you'll see the 28C of Shane Creech. Andy Bryant's 49 to his right hand. Then Shad Batter and Dylan McCowan make up row number seven. There have been four different winners in this modified division here at Lucas Oil Speedway. Will we claim number five tonight? Or will Dylan McCowan, who has won six times on the season already, last time he won, he came from deep in the field to pick up the victory. Can he do that again tonight? 20 laps left to determine as E.T. takes us to the green. Cody Brill on the outside, giving a good battle with Eric Turner down the back stretch. Dylan McCowan there in your screen. He's going to start to pick his way through the field as Cody Brill leads lap number one. Dustin Hodges there in the 22, right behind Cody Brill and Eric Turner. And Cody Brill has been on a roll. That car has improved this year, the 96. Seems to get an opportunity to run up front from time to time. Tonight, he gets one of those front two starting spots. And he and Eric Turner, Shane, have really just traded spots. But Hodges here looks like he wants to hot foot it around the high side. And maybe the 22H will have something for Cody Brill as he goes right up against the wall and chases him into one and two. Cody Brill with 13 career wins to his credit, one championship. That was at Atchison County back in 2015. His one win this year came at Valley Speedway back in April. Eric Turner will try to grab the lead on that lap. He can't do it. .04 seconds behind Cody Brill, but he stays. Will to will with him down the back stretch. Dustin Hodges lurking in the weeds. Back behind the top two running cars. He goes higher than any of the cars on the track right now off of turn four. Three car battle for the top spot. Three cars firing all the way around this three eighths of a mile semi banked oval and Turner and Brill just don't, they seem to be bungee strapped together. They haven't gotten a half a car length in front of either one and Dustin Hodges so far Shane, this is the type of patient run you need. You know what these two cars are doing right now. You just got to wait, pick your line, and try to maybe split the wickets and take them both in the same move as now Turner gets a little bit of power under the hood of the 16, tricycles his way through a couple of turns, and they'll get lined up one, two, three under the flag stand. Yeah, it took seven laps to go single file for your top three cars. Deeper in the field, Jason Persley, who's running back in sixth, has Lucas Dobbs in front of him in the 23, and Jeff Cutshaw currently runs in seventh back behind these two cars as Dobbs out of El Dorado Springs, Missouri, had car issues late in the year last year, was really ready for that season to be done. Once he got that season back behind him, it's been considerably better running sixth in the current point standings as now as Turner has stretched his lead out, Dustin Hodges will go to work on Cody Brill. This is a battle for second as Brill dives to the inside. Hodges doesn't let off the gas at all through turns one and two, running the high side. Hodges a five-time winner with 14 top tens on the season in line for another one, but he's got his sights on second place and he goes screaming around the brilliant graphics 96 of Cody Brill. Brill up over the cushion now, and he is in danger of losing another spot to Tracy Wolf, but he immediately gets right back in the cat gas and gets that green car going back in the right direction. But now he loses second place to Hodges and finds himself in another heated battle, now for third with Wolf. Yeah, I think that power move from Dustin Hodges to get around Cody Brill made him stay in the gas a little bit too long, it got into unchartered territory up top for Cody Brill, and that's what made him lose so much track position. Now the question as the hunt is on for the top spot. 
did Dustin Hodges leave enough time with eight laps to go to reel in your leading running Eric Turner in the 16S as Jason Pursley makes a pass for position. This is a battle for fifth as Pursley riding up top and Lucas Dobbs to the inside. When's the last time you've seen Jason Pursley spend that much time flirting with the cushion? He is running the Andy Bryant high side right now. And oh, where was your question on when Dylan McCowan would make it into the top five? Because your midseason points champ is here. He is right behind Pursley and Dobbs now and the eight trying to sneak its way through traffic as you go back to the front and a tenth of a second the last couple of laps, Shane, has allowed Hodges to hustle up to the high side now and try to slingshot around Eric Turner. Eric Turner's last lap was 19.09 seconds. Dustin Hodges ran sub 19. Now that he's caught up with him, different story though. He's able to get right on the back bumper, but with five to go, is he going to find a way to get around him? Team 2-2 has been running topside this entire time, and that's where Eric Turner has kept his bumper in that path. Really hasn't let Dustin Hodges stay in the gas the way he was able to get around Cody Brill. He's going to have to do something different if he's going to find a way to get around the 16 with four to go. I'm waiting for that late model slide job here, Shane. Dustin Hodges, your 2015 ULMA Rookie of the Year, 2016 and 18 ULMA champion, and right now, I think he's just running a line with Turner and going to pick his spot. He may wait all the way until turn number four on the final lap, or he may try and jump the gun here with just two laps to go. Boy, if I'm Dustin Hodges, I want to get around the 16 as fast as I can. I was able to catch up with him quickly. I've got a feeling if he gets around him, he's able to gap him. He's going to go inside this time. Had to do something different. I'm not going to say that's a clean slide job, but it'll get the job done with one to go. Dustin Hodges in team 2-2. Two, two. Five wins on the season, has come home second place two times, both last month here at Lucas Oil Speedway. He knifed into the point battle lead, taking down 40 points a week ago. He'll make up more points tonight as he will win his first time at Lucas Oil Speedway this season victorious at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. Dustin Hodges, Eric Turner, Cody Brill go one, two, three. They started at three, one, two, and Hodges able to get over the hump here in Wheatland, his sixth win of the year. The first time he will go to victory lane here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks in 2022. The rest of your top five, Tracy Wolf and Jason Pursley. Dylan McCowan goes from 14th to 6th, finishing one spot out of the top five. Then Dobbs Cutshaw, Andy Bryant, and Kitten Addiction, Johnny Wyman, round out your top ten. Dal Feller's batter.